now it's the lighting step. I always work with a mix of HDRI and Sun and Sky. I mean, obviously for daylight scenes. Uh, we have this great site HDRI Haven. It's amazing. It's totally free, but have the Patreon there. You should consider supporting it. It's an amazing job to our community. So back to Maya. So all my proxies and trees and everything are hide. We we want to to work on the most faster and lighter way we don't want to wait a lot for the the render we're going to make the lighting of the house once the house is looking good we can turn on the visibility of all the environment and see if it fits for everything and then we can make some smaller adjustments you can see it's really really fast to work only with the house and with the displacement turned off it saves us a lot of time and a lot of headache working this way as you can see the feedback is real time the shadows are really hard we can fix it on the physical sky the sun scale will control this our scale of the scene is 1 to 10 and i i'm not a i'm not a defender of physical lighting system i i, I mean you can feel free to go crazy because in the end of the day what really matters is the final result so don't stick with any kind of things that can lock your workflow and brain what really matters is your final result and now let's create a dome light and see how it looks with an hdri i have this hdri that i've downloaded from that site that i said before to you and as you can see it's really fast also uh, let's turn off the sun to see how the HDRI looks alone. I always like to try some, try rotating a little bit and see how it looks uh, using the physical sky alone. Give us a little bit. Uh, it's it's kind of boring the way that the materials react you don't have much information on the reflection so using this hdri we can we can make glimpse all the details that we did on substance before and on zbrush uh, the scene comes to life and mixing the sun with the hdri you can see that we have the best of both worlds. Let's load our environment now. You can see that the scene takes a while to translate and that's why I said before it's really important to work with as less elements as we can. You can always use the region render to save a lot of time while we'll make some fine tweaks as you can see the clouds are dark they are volume and we have to say that our lights should affect volume this is not on by default on redshift so let's raise the contribution scale of the sunlight but the shadows are still dark this is because our dome light is not affecting the volume yet 
we cannot go crazy here because with putting every light on one the clouds will look really really bright I think that a good amount of our main light in this case the sunlight is like 0.8 and for the dome light we always want to keep on more or less 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and the last thing is always work with 32 bits linear workflow it's great to have a lot of control and information for the post-production the scene doesn't need to be great out of the 3D you can always use the composition to make the things better and the colors to shine and whatever you want to do now let's talk a little bit about the composition and color correction this is my final render I always export my renders in EXR 32 bits then later I convert them to 16 bits although this is my final render I've passed through many steps before get, getting into it so as you can see here I had this color scheme this is why you've seen on the tutorial showing the flower this flower is called bluebell and it's a pretty flower but this composition wasn't fitting these colors were strange and I don't know the Harry Potter world is based on the England the Weasley's home is on the countryside and this image was looking like I don't know maybe somewhere in Australia or some savannah looking I don't know but I wasn't happy at all so I've tried to paint over on Photoshop some some tests and then I came to this result here it's it's odd to see this way but sometimes it's, it's good to mess around in Photoshop and try to feed your eyes with more more styles and colors and this is how the ideas come and it's much easier doing this on Photoshop than changing all of it in 3D especially on the scene with a huge amount of textures and anyway don't don't worry i know that 3d artists tends to resolve everything in 3d but sometimes you just have to go to other software packages and try things so then after i spent some time in photoshop i went back to substance painter i've changed all the textures of the woods and roof and changed the bluebell flower to red and also I realized that the composition there were a lot of elements drawing attention from the house this composition is not well resolved uh, this way there is no a main subject we can tell that the house is the main the main element so I've talked more about the overall composition and again this is our final result final render i've put the clouds as i'm showing you on the previous video and the clouds help us to frame the house better so with this raw render i've came here to photoshop and this is my final composition let's open the layers so this is the raw image then I've made some adjustments with selective color with vibrance saturation I've selected the reds and made them brighter and with much more 
vibrance I've corrected a little bit the blues but I don't know I wasn't happy with this this image yet so then I've lowered a little bit the saturation one thing I I think that's important is try to to see your image while you're composing in as much as the screens you can because here I have this mobile studio pro I have a Asus monitor and both of them the image was looking good but when I opened it on my cell phone the the colors were way too saturated it was totally ugly then that's why I lowered the saturation and but with all of this with all of this color correction I did the the reds on the image were starting to draw attention again from the house you can see these clouds are fighting with the house so I did some color correction on the clouds made them more blue this way they blend better on the sky and the house pop-ups other thing that was bothering me was that the scene were not feeling I don't know were feeling raw yet I took a break waited one day to my eyes rest a little bit this is important never never post your work with your eyes tired I mean take a while take a breath if you there's something bothering you for sure if you take a break and go walk go outside just relax this way you will go back to your computer and we will see the things in a much more clear way so I did another color correction this time I decided to put more yellow let's turn on and turn off the green before was looking dull and the blue and red also so now I think that the colors are talking between each other in a better way this trees over here, these yellow trees, I think that turns the overall composition much more appealing but the reds here and overall, I don't know, I wasn't happy yet with the reds on the scene so I made another color correction, now the reds are more kind of pink, let's turn on and turn off think that we're looking a little bit orange I don't know now I I prefer this pinkish look especially between the blues and reds and also with this orange woods I think that the scene is more is more alive and I thought that the house wasn't in evidence yet so I've made this mask just like a vignette effect but more on a, in a freestyle way so now as you can see the house is definitely the main subject of our composition and to finalize these reds on the roof and chimney were fighting a little bit with the house and the windows I've raised the blues and yellows and this is the final result so if you have any doubts, any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. You can find me on Facebook on ArtStation. And thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial.